it is going to be Hero versus Rainer, which is certainly one of the hypest matches on the list today of uh, a list that actually has a ton of hype matches. So let us get into it steadfast on a waterfall to start things off. In the bottom left, we do have the Purple Zerg, Rainer. And his opponent, spawning up at the top right for Dragon Phoenix Gaming, it is Hero. The progenitor of the hero style, duh. But he's uh, he's really revolutionized things. Now he starts off with a pylon that I have to say makes me frown. It's cool. <laughs> he's going to be able to get away with a one gate expo. But I always look at this and I think to myself, you're going to be baneling busted, my friend. I, it, it just it instantly gives me anxiety. It's weird. So Hero, okay, a couple of things. Hero is one of the only Protosses that seems to like playing on Waterfall. Uh, that does seem to be generally not appreciated in this matchup anyways. I don't know if it really matters in PvP, for instance, but, uh, but I do think that it makes sense for his style of play. He loves the ability to expand towards his opponent and then push and defend at the same time, almost very Karen-esque, which Waterfall lends itself to quite well. But the other thing about Hero is that he walls terribly on this map. That is actually just a fact. Like, either he walls incorrectly, and I'm talking incorrectly. I'm not talking like Zomberg. You just don't understand Hero's big brain. I'm talking incorrectly. <laughs> like, he will have two gaps instead of one. Yeah. Uh, or he does this, I guess, to kind of compensate. Because I, I do believe that there is a way, pylon behind bigger structures, to still wall off. <laughs> but... He's not confident doing it is maybe what he's like gotten down to. He's absolutely right. This is a very bustable wall. And uh, we have seen Zerg players pick up on this if it's done consistently. Yeah, and I wonder if that's what he's trying to bait. Uh, we did see, by the way, Astrea in his matchup versus Rainer in his game three on Waterfall. A very similar setup to this. Not quite the same, but the same concept where you put the pylon in the wall. He had one big gap. The stalker was ever so slightly out of position and it cost him the game. And it cost, I mean, it cost the fans and the viewers, you know, an actual good game three because I think Roddy and you both, we, no, Roddy pointed it out. Was he, was he casting with you? No, he wasn't. This is the Helm Strike Cup, wasn't it? No, no, no. This, no, this was, uh, this was this tournament. Uh, Fear Dragon. Roddy and Fear Dragon pointed it out that that basically uh, cost Astraea the match versus Raynor in game right, number three because right. he was going for like a DT drop build and when lings get in and they kill even a couple of probes and disrupt anything with a build order that already kind of puts you behind if you don't get damage done it it basically created like a snowball situation that Astrea just really couldn't recover from which was very unfortunate because it was a, an incredibly close series at that point now I think oh wow I think he actually could have committed forward for that because there was no lings in the main but obviously he plays it safe, and I, I don't blame him for that either. Yeah, I think he really wants to make sure that the scouting is is optimal until the Oracle pops out. So, yeah, it's like it's timing out almost perfectly. Um, I will say also on a, like as we have the last touches of the wall uh, conversation, is that hero I, I pick? I don't know if it is a theory or he's actually totally correct. So it just seems so far out there. But basically, Pig always mentions that Hero is like baiting Zerg players to actually do a run by against them. Which, to be fair, I feel like half the time, Hero does effectively handle a run by. So it does look like a bait. It looks like a waste of 20 lings, whatever it is. Um, and I do, you know, you mentioned kind of like maybe a bit uh, out there, but yeah, maybe a uh, a bait to do a bailing bust. So I just, it, it is so out of the context of what we usually <laughs> expect from a PVZ, right? But I'm still, I'm still iffy on that one. But yeah, last touch on the on the, the wall, because it's not the most important thing. Far more important is that Hero is going for a much faster Twilight Council with no Forge, no Robo, already building a lot of gateways. And as we can finally see, it is going to be leading into a Resident and Glaives build. So very different indeed. What really sucks about this is, uh, huh. I said last touch is on the wall. Uh, <laughs> I lied. Uh. <laughs> got through and scouted everything. And that is enough information, I believe, to know that it's resident enclaves. So Rainer is actually already on his way to plus one melee, and he's going to go for a Baneling option against this, which every so often doesn't work 
you know, you run out of banelings, there's still too many adepts, and you're like, oh shit, I've underestimated this, but I, I think it will work. He's going to be so prepared. Yeah, the the only thing is if he thinks this is like a super all-in version of the Blink Stalker play, where you go and you just try and snowball no plus one. Uh, in this case, there is a robo, but maybe no robo. That being said, seeing this number of adepts should let him know, okay, yeah, no, that, that wouldn't make sense. And Hero's yeah, he... going to commit forward. Resonating Glaives is not yet done. It isn't, um, but this actually might still work out in his favor. Uh, just the last touch on that build, I do believe that the Blink Stalker version has a third gas is all, is is the difference, and I'm not even sure Rainer saw or not. Uh, Ray, Hero eventually adding on gas, of course. This is not going to be the only thing he's looking to do in this game with three bases up and running and is building probes once again, but it is going to be a decent amount of, let's say, dedicated pressure. Uh, well, I, I say decent amounts. It's not even all that many units right now. Resident Glaives does finish up. The Adept is still alive. There's not that many, but this is causing some oh. serious problems. <laughs> Coming in a bit earlier, man. <laughs> One of the Adepts taking a little vacation there on the high ground. I, did that... That was weird. D you saw that, right? Where it just sat up on the pillar for half a second? That was... So I didn't, oh. but I know exactly what you're talking about. I actually saw that bug in my own game. <laughs> and there was some discussion oh. about whether it was going to... Uh, Effect, I don't know, professional games. I don't know if uh, we say that it did, but now it's a lot of adepts. So initially, it was kind of a, almost a comical amount of, of, you know, five adepts, right? That was causing so much chaos, but that is kind of the point. It caused so much chaos. Rainer was just a little bit underprepared, and now that he is prepared, well, there was an opportunity for Hero to split a little bit more and maybe mitigate the damage done, but eh, I guess it is still good enough. Saves five adepts, very low health. Yeah, and this did cause, as you said, a lot of chaos. The drone count wasn't... Well, I mean, he got 16 drones in total. That It feels like he didn't get that many, but it, it kind of added up over time. And he's caused a lot of just general damage. We are yeah. going to see the... I... Oh, sorry, go on. Well, I just... I think this is actually a straight-up disaster. Yeah. You know, like, Raiders spent way too much time taking care of this and building way too many lings. All things that aren't drones, and of course he lost drones on top of it. And it still isn't being cleaned up. No. Like, I, I do believe that Rainer had a lot more confidence in the Baneling response. Understandably so. But that little, again, th almost throwaway line for me, which is like, sometimes the Banelings don't do enough, and then it's kind of awkward. It's actually happening right now. Hero is creating way too much damage. Yeah, and behind this, he's... Oh, my God, he even rev <laughs> gets the recall. Uh, behind this, it is double Robo, either Disruptor or Colossus. So we've got Hero playing completely off meta right now for himself he has <laughs> played this hero style this four gas uh blink stalker charge lot style so heavily in his games and now he comes in with resonating glaives behind it goes pretty quickly up to six gases and a very quick colossus transition and we saw rayner trying to kind of uh, kind of preempt that a little bit with the plus one melee play going for what would be I guess the best way of dealing with it, which then leaves you a little bit vulnerable to these Glaive Adepts. And now Mass Ling is going to be terrible against these Colossus. It's going to be useless. Yeah, I would not be surprised if this Colossus push is actually just what ends up ends the game. Just that, That's actually it. Rainer can't do anything about it. I, it I would take it. It is a very suboptimal position for him. I would take it one step further and say I would be incredibly surprised if it doesn't end the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is that bad for Rainer. Yeah. I, I mean, I do think that he respond like the Banelin S being thrown down when it was, I'm pretty sure was, I, I think it even was still okay time. I think the real trick was that hero arrived five to eight seconds faster than he anticipated. So the Lings weren't out catching the Adepts. The Banelings weren't out getting the combo with the surround on the Adepts. It was, or oh, I'm kind of chasing with not enough Lings. Okay, those died. I gotta make more Lings. Okay, like I, I also gotta make Banelings. Hold on here a second. And then the Adepts are just running around almost way too freely. There is absolutely a world where Raynor has enough Lings to get us around on the initial Adepts, three or four banelings to immediately detonate on them and then it's it's so easy it's very unlikely to snowball after you take care of that first wave as cleanly as is ideal but it was very much less than ideal for rainer so he has been spiraling from that and here comes hero with four bases plus two charge four colossus warp prism is gonna get destroyed to be fair oh. but uh i don't think it matters i mean 
No, I think you're right. I think there's just too much firepower in this army <laughs> to begin with. But if there is any way for Rainer to hold, it's off of a situation like that. Now, Waterfall is a short map, and he can reinforce from that top left side base anyways. We are going to see Ling's trying to come in for a wraparound, but the Colossus are already up on the high ground. I will say he should probably pull the whole army up to the high ground and just just attack from there, just keep everything clumped together. But the sentries can still force field everything on the low ground. He's creating a situation where he's kind of... It, things are more complicated for him by having his army kind of separated out. But he does have these Colossus that can kind of oscillate between high ground, low ground. Link Stalkers can do the same. And that's exactly what we are going to see. We are going to see the Lings getting absolutely obliterated by these Colossi as they try for the flank. Force Fields holding the units at the front. And Hero loses basically nothing. Looking at the resources lost tab is a sad situation for the Zerg here. 10,000 to 4,000. Blink oh. forward coming on in. <laughs> People talk about patience blinks. That was an impatience blink. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Yeah, I don't care if you have Bailing still alive. I'm going to blink into them. What's up? Uh, it was uh, pretty much complete domination there from Hero. And I absolutely think that it is off of different expectations. As much yeah. as I believe that Raynor was preparing to deal with it, it was not a shock. He got those Lings in. I, I can't even imagine what would happen if he didn't get that Ling in, right? And he just like is completely blindsided. It's probably game over with the adepts, but yeah. it effectively was anyways. But I do think that going into this game for the first five six minutes of the the situation, Rainer was probably thinking, okay, what type of blink stalker thing is it going to be? Like, what type of early aggression? But probably not adepts. Is it going to be just because adepts make sense on waterfall for a lot of Protosses? It's not meta, and it's not meta for hero. So yeah, um, maybe like it's like. Maybe, like, physically, if you will. <laughs> he was kind of prepared for it, but uh, mentally, uh, emotionally, I don't, yeah. think he, I don't think that's how it was. Yeah, and I think it was Hero playing into confirmation bias a little bit. Because even with, like you said, Raynor got a great scout that showed him technically that it wasn't going to be Blink Stalkers, that it should have been Glaive Adepts. But sometimes you see something that's close enough and because you're expecting a certain thing, and he obviously was with that plus one melee, your brain tells you something else. And that's that's actually really interesting. I want to talk about it a little bit more, but we're going to have Spawny down in the bottom left for Kitesy Gaming. It is Rainer. In the top right, up one for DPG. He is Hero. Yeah, so what I want to kind of uh, allude to is that Rainer, in one of his interviews, says he doesn't like preparing for players because he doesn't want to go in with preconceived notions. He'd rather play by feel. And to that point, we had a situation where he kind of can't... <laughs> Hero is so heavily ingrained as playing that, you know, that very aggressive Blink Stalker Charge Lot style that... I think that's kind of what got in Rainer's way there a little bit, and it caused him to, even if he had what he needed to deal with it, it caused him to not be, as you said, mentally prepared. As much as Rainer, I absolutely believe what he's saying, that he is a feelings, you know, instinct player, I still think that there are boxes you either accidentally or have to even put your put your, your, your thought process in for StarCraft, which is that, yeah. you know, you do have some expectations for your opponent, at this level anyways, I don't for my ladder opponent. Although, if they're a barcode, <laughs> that's <some> serious <laughs> judgment. Um, but no, seriously, it, it, there is something about it, right? So even though I 100% believe Rainer is a instinctual player, and I, I absolutely love that, um, I, yeah, I actually I would, I would be surprised if he, if we interviewed him, and he was like, yeah, I, th I knew it was an option, I just, you know, did something wrong. I, I actually would think that he would be like, yeah, I didn't think he was going to do it, but it's not like it's impossible, which is totally fair. But the box was already kind of stepped into, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the map itself probably did play a little bit to the power of it. It is not our shortest, our shortest map in the map pool again, but it is still shorter. Um, and again, that hero uh, kind of pulled the trigger a little bit faster than you would expect. But... This is all off the assumption that, yes, Rainer did understand that it was Adepts, which you have said it is, it is possible that he also still thought it was Blink right to the last second, right until he saw those Adepts. So even yeah. though he got a Bailing Nest seemingly in response, maybe that was just preparing for the future. Yeah, and there are busts you can do 
off like two gases with Ling Bane, you know, anywhere from 40 to 50 drones that aren't all ins, but they are trying to get damage done on a third base of the Protoss. And that can be in response to a Blink Stalker play. That can be a, okay, I want to gain the tempo advantage and kind of put in a bit of a spoiling attack, a preemptive strike to prevent you from gaining the tempo advantage. That's that's kind of what is become a little bit of this hero style this back and forth in pvz is who can gain the initiative first and who can kind of start to snowball things it's it's a very interesting matchup and it's really made me excited about pvz in a way that i haven't been in a long time but <laughs> let's get into this map a little bit tropical sacrifice this is the kind of map where i don't think we're gonna see something like a glaive adept push i think we're gonna be seeing much more of hero returning to what is his strength mm -hmm. if i had to choose i think it would be one of the faster four base like mass sprawl of of battles with with blink stalker charge but clearly hero is is coming into this best of three with some other points you know because if he yeah. had done last game with just regular blink stalker maybe the three gas blink stalker attack the point is blink stalker it would have been Totally fine with that. I do think that Hero playing purely Blink Stalker, but variations of it still works out for him. But he is throwing in the Adepts. He might even throw in like, uh, you know, just straight up Charge Immortal, which Protosses are still throwing in here um, for sure. We're getting some hints towards his plans or his expectations at the very least. So like actually right now, keeping huh. this Oracle at home. They seem to be a little bit wary of Rainer actually throwing in you know, 20 lings to try and, and get a cancel on the third base. So now he's going to go for some harassment. And then we see a Twilight Council and a Robo, not a Forge. And, uh, we and only one gas on the natural. We see something very interesting as well, which is no probe production for quite some time. Yeah. I think we're going to be seeing a big charge lot just all in, just straight up. And yeah, there it is, charge coming on down right away. Oh my goodness. Hero, yeah. you said he came in with a plan. This is a plan and a half right here, and he's not even going to bother saturating that gas. That is a fake through and through. Oh, this is this is old school. This is something Chinese Protoss players love to do. This is not something I expected out of Hero, but no, what are we doing losing that Oracle? We can't afford that. He might be able to, honestly. This is going to be such a surprise. I actually think that, that Rainer is going to be a bit bamboozled. We'll see how his Roach production is once the Roach Warren finishes. But oh. did he fake Chrono? Oh, yes, no, he did. Yes, he did. Was, no, he did. It was, he it was did a fake. build a probe, oh, of course, God. with it. But, oh, that sucks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know what? More and more, I don't think I agree with Pig. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think Hero just leaves his door open. <laughs> I think he should... Oh no, that is a disaster right here. Now the only thing is, does Rainer not recognize? He recognizes, he's building roaches, he's... He should be relatively prepared for this. Now there is still gonna be a big first shock where there's no roaches on the field. Second Oracle does go down, that means no stasis ward, no additional DPS, the Queen's holding their own very effectively. Is there gonna be enough to hold overall though? This is still a little bit scary, but I think Rainer is surviving the most dangerous moment. Just in time building the roaches. Also all of his queens in the same position to hold the first round of Zealots, I think is also really important to this. This is the same thing I think that happened with Dark as well, when Hero went for a big changeup in game two of their series in Valencia, um, where it was so close to working, and it seemed like it should have worked. Like, everything, oh. the stars are kind of aligned. Lose the Warpers and lose the game. All right, GG. Um, but the Queens were able to basically buy enough time for the rest of the units to pop out, right? The one thing that they're good at in that situation is absolutely buying time. It's not really killing Zelos all that quickly. So, actually, you know, you said it. That first Oracle going down, we can't allow that. And I think it could have been correct without the Ling, uh... Or I, I could have been correct without the Ling Scout, like that maybe didn't matter if he really had no idea whatsoever and his queens were like spreading creep and doing whatever else. But I do think that if you have two oracles flying around dragging queens away and suddenly there's only three or four queens on the front as opposed to all six or seven, whatever that was, I do think it's a big difference. Charge lot all ins, no matter if it's one, two or three bases, rely a lot on that first warp in being the, 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 the set, I guess the, the tempo the maker. Point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not usually the second and the third. Those are what you know finalizes the deal. Yeah. It's the first one that actually 
starts the game in the Protoss's favor. So clever things from Hero, but this time around, Rainer was prepared. Yeah, and you talked about game plans. Hero has absolutely come in with a game plan here. Something else that was very critical to the defense of Rainer right there as well. So you talked about having the queens in position. It wasn't just having the queens in position. He had three queens in a really nice, beautiful line, and they were all being transfused up. Right next to that was a spore crawler, which actually ended up providing like a weird plug to a wall that was very <laughs> impromptu. But it helped a lot because it prevented those zealots from really wrapping around and they didn't get the value that they were looking for. And I looked at that fight and as I was calling it, I'm thinking to myself, uh-oh, am I calling this wrong? Because there's like the roaches are not on the field yet. They're not joining up. But those queens, those queens just held the line forever. That, that mm -hmm. armor upgrade obviously helping them a lot. The fact that the transfuses were keeping them alive. But really, I think the, the unsung hero of that until now, because we're singing it out, is that spore crawler. The spore crawler... It just kind of acted as this weird plug for the wall, yeah. and it, it helped Rainer so much. It was additional part of the wall, uh, absolutely. And then I do think that it helped take out the Oracle. The Oracle probably dies, so all the queens focus firing it anyways. But then do imagine maybe there's a couple of queens that didn't quite get in range because the charge lots literally body blocked them. The Oracle gets a stasis wrap and catches five queens. Um, that might have been game over as well because then the road numbers are not high enough. But, yeah. yeah, very, very small details as it was so much packed into basically 15 seconds or even actually less because it was just the battle. But of course, the other important detail is that the Lings got in. They saw that there wasn't <laughs> a lot of probes, there wasn't all the gases. And that was, I think, also a very big deal. If Rainer had waited any longer to pull the Queens forward to build those roaches, he might have gotten overwhelmed. So. As far as the trickery, the mind games, the coolness factor, I think this is living up to the hype. I'd love to see a very, very long back and forth game from these two. In the bottom left of Inside and Out, of the pylon wall, he is Hero. And his opponent, spawning up the top right with the excellent scout, the excellent defense. It is Kaitsa Gaming's Rainer. He uh, he got in in the nick of time. You said it best. Even a couple of seconds difference in that game, and the result is probably a two zero for Hero. Mm -hmm. I I think I think yeah, ten to fifteen seconds. Now that's a big difference one way or the other, but somewhere in that realm, and and things go completely differently. Oh, we got some cute Pip with the overlords. <laughs> I love that so much. It makes me smile. Just something to make the beginning of the game cuter, right? Yep. Anything. My, my favorite is when it's two Zerg players and they offer a kiff. Yeah. In the middle. And a kiff. And it's, you know, they either kiff or they, they do the little fist bump. Yeah, we just fist bump in the middle. Yeah, yeah. High five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, bro. I um. Mean, <laughs> I feel like there's... Hero? <laughs> Hero. Oh, he's done it again. I didn't think he'd set it out. Or oh, maybe it wasn't set it out. Maybe it wasn't Waterfall. Oh, no, I'm hero. pretty sure it was Waterfall as well. There's, there, he does not get the best walls on these maps, man. <laughs> why did, why does so he do funny. this? <laughs> it is so funny because I don't, I, I, I don't know. I, I actually think that um, this is the only time I will ever bring my personal experience into this, right? Because otherwise, who cares? But walls, I gotta say are one of the things that you can figure out fairly early on in your StarCraft career. Because what you do is you just go to Gemini's Twitter and you see yeah. how you're supposed to wall. <laughs> and you're like, okay, got it. That's gonna be nice. It feels like Hero, uh, and I don't know why the new map pool in particular, it feels like he hasn't actually focused on it. Because the first week this happened, fun, funny. It happens, especially because this map pool was like, it was released before it was actually in the ladder. Blah, blah, blah. But this is this is this has gone on a little bit too long, Hero. I can't. We can't defend this. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like I can't. I can't help you. <laughs> I want oh. to. I really do. Well, Rainer's gonna help him and show him that yes, in fact, there are two holes in your wall. Uh, yeah. Hero, like why? Like why? Why are you doing this to us? <laughs> All right, there it is. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't, man. I don't. Like, the, it, 
the thing I was going to say about my own experience is that the only map that I can remember in, in recent history that has really always got me was uh, Blackburn. For some reason, always got me personally. And I do know that there are maps. I don't, I, maybe this is a Protoss thing. Maybe I'm just also special. But there's like one map that might get people. So I thought that was Hero and Waterfall. But apparently it's more than one. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> I think it's but just... Rainer doesn't take advantage of it anyway, so... Oh, well. Yeah, it's just hero in walls in general. Like his his personal vend vendetta against a good wall is God. It might be it might be the best rivalry since Rogue versus the fans. <laughs> that is one of the best rivalries that doesn't incorporate two player names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Someone someone on. should change their someone's gamer tag should be the fans. Right. Well, I'm sure Fear Dragon. I th I literally think he's thought of this. Actually, <laughs> this might I, be uh, something that you cast with him at like Kings of the North. It's whittled into your subconscious. Oh, probably. Yeah, he's probably already said it. And yeah, yeah. You're almost definitely right about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, uh, uh, this double oracle is looking around so far. Rainer's doing a great job with his queen positioning, keeping these at bay. Has oh oh, oh nice save. Oh, yeah, oh. oh, okay, not that one. Still, yeah, good good save overall. Yeah, good enough, as we actually, I think, have our first real macro game underway. Yeah. So really, the, the biggest point about that is seeing a forge come down for Hero. So that does at least show oh. a, a longer game. Oh. This, wait, hang, how many gateways? He just pumped Adepts off two gates for a very long period he of did. time. He did, yes. Um, we are really picking up on that, watching the Oracle control and miss control. Lost one, almost lost a second. Uh, but yes, he was just pumping off of two gateways consistently. So nothing's really protecting his third base right now. I think there might be a shield battery, but you know, if Rainer had <laughs> done something with the Lings, it would have been very awkward. Now it is just defensive. So the Adepts are sharking around for an opportunity. They have yet to find one. They have perhaps delayed. I don't, I don't know if they really delayed the Twilight Council and the Forge, the consistent production, but they might have. Um, and so far, they haven't really been worth it, but... Nope, still not worth it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm just so distracted by what Hero does. Like, sometimes... <laughs> uh, <laughs> sometimes it just makes me chuckle. Uh, nice pull right there from Rainer. He's going to prevent this from being a big problem. I wonder if Hero was trying to represent another glaive push with those adepts and hoping that maybe Rainer would overreact. That's that's what makes the most sense to me. And if that's the case, that would be pretty cool. We're going to see these oracles getting on in, but the miscontrol, he's going to lose another one of them. At first, I was about to praise him for some really good play, but losing two oracles like this while going for this very aggressive tempo-based style is really debilitating. And we see him rebuilding an Oracle now. The thing about this style is you love, if you can get up into four, five, or even six Oracles, it's so good. Yeah, well, it's like an, it's an option, right? And that can be very good, but obviously losing a bunch of them, that option doesn't exist as much, I guess. It is still something he could do if he thought it was the best thing for the game. But just in general, having three oracles consistently running around, gaining energy, setting stasis traps, using pulsar beam, uh, helping the stalkers move out, right? All those things. The oracles, I think very initially on the build order, were kind of unsung heroes, right? It was like, oh, he's doing well with them, I guess. But now I think a lot of people have managed to focus in and be like, yeah, the oracles are really important to the style of play. So they have been rather lackluster. Is it, is it the game breaker? Is it the deal breaker? I don't think so, but not the perfect game from Hero. Yeah, it's it's a little bit unfortunate. It's always tough to keep those units alive. There's a, there's a lot going on in a game of StarCraft, but at the same time, controlling those oracles, I mean, for a little bit, that should be the only thing you're doing. You're the one who gets to choose when the fight takes place. Now, Raynor... Everything is looking pretty good for him, but he hasn't been able to get explosive creep spread the way I think you really want to in a situation like this. And Hero is doing a good job of just kind of staying at the edges of creep and, you know, avoiding overcommitting. We're going to see a really nice link run by canceling the fifth base just as it goes down. That's a great play from Raynor. Yeah. 
And now they might be able to come up and take a surround opportunity. Actually, Hero, I think, should be predicting this. Yeah. And he does start to, so he blinks off to the left side, hopefully making it only a one half attack. Yeah, he even blinks aggressively to find these lings, which works. Yeah, I guess that works. And while setting up his Adepts, which, you know, thus far have really not done very much. They might have caused a momentary panic for Raynor, so he didn't drone as hard as he could have. But maybe it's their time to shine, finally. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are going to be seeing a an aggressive move forward here, kind of pinning Hero up against the wall. The Oracle's going to help out a lot. There's no Queens to cover this. But with just the sheer amount of Blink Stalkers, he will get pushed back. Charge Lots are coming in on the other... No, those are the Adepts from earlier. Okay. So I guess he gets a little bit of value. He gets six drones. That's kind of nice. It's not going to be a critical mount. Rainer is going to slow things down a little bit, though, as he adds on a Lurker Den. He said that he's not a big fan of this in PvZ because it gives up so much map control. But that also tells me that he wants to drag this game out. He doesn't want this to be ended in the next period of, like, short period of time. He wants this to go for a while. I do think that Lurkers are the ultimate stop to this Blink Stalker phase. Unless you're already losing, or just in a precarious position, I suppose, not necessarily losing, um, then I think Lurkers actually are, are quite good. And that is maybe a bit in question right now, is Raynor going to have trouble holding this? So far, the answer is no. Does fine, even without typical hooks, even without the plus one missile. Hero's not going to be able to, to push forward too much more. And that Lurker is already finishing. Uh, the Hydras will at least incorporate some Lurkers right off the bat. Although still not that really, really scary count. So this is still Hero's time to play around the map and play, you know, aggressively into these hatcheries. But once you're talking about five Lurkers to the left, three Lurkers to the right, it's going to be very difficult for Hero to actually find a lot of damage. And that actually, I, I wonder if Hero has almost solved that problem. Because it does seem to be one of the bigger stoppers of his style of play. Is does his opponent get to Lurkers? Can he stop them from getting to an effective amount of Lurkers? And if they get there, what does he do? And it looks like he's actually going to stand and fight just a little bit too long on this left side. Lurker, even just one of them, with his plus one missile getting a few shots on those Stalkers, can be a really big kind of drain of momentum. can kind of slow you down significantly. We are going to be seeing the Stalkers... Uh, the blinks are not the cleanest from Hero. He's really focusing a lot on this right side with the charge lots. But it feels like Raynor is consistently pulling just enough units over here on the right side to prevent this from becoming a big problem while he really stabilizes the left. So he's doing exactly what you were kind of looking for. <laughs> now, though, a nice little move with the Oracles, able to get one of those Lurkers. Transfuse, not able to keep the second one alive long enough. Did he lose any oracles there? I think he might have lost one. Can we take a look at Maybe. the battle report? Mm, no, zero. He's lost three in total. Three in total. Yeah. Uh, okay, he did lose one. You're right. 41 zealots during this stage. Oh, my yeah. goodness. The things actually... I, I know this game is not nearly over. Hero is going up to six bases, 85 drones. But things seem to already be unraveling for Hero. I really do think this is the current biggest problem for Protoss players with this style of play. Uh, unless they can suppress the Zerg enough. But though I say it, that actually was a huge surprise to Raynor. Loses the frontline lurkers, I guess, because he wasn't expecting the actual bulk up of the army, which can be tricky, right? Either they're splitting their army, and you should split your army as well, or they're combining it, and you should combine your army as well. But he still holds, had a couple of lurkers behind all of the Roach Hydra. And that will do the trick. Uh, plus, the melee is almost done on these wings, making them, I think, true cracklings. And it just looks like a very good game for lurker, uh, for lur lurkers, yes, but for Rainer uh, in particular, right? I, can Hero actually overwhelm such effectiveness? Lurkers are so effective. Yeah, against those. Know. Against those basic gateway units, it's just a nightmare to try and get anything done. Unless you have yeah. an incredible concave or you can kind of catch them unguarded. But speaking of being caught unguarded, caught out of position, it is Hero getting massively flanked with these Blink Stalkers. And that is a lot of units to lo lose after you've already lost huh. a fair number. Charge Lot's trying to come in through the top side, but once again, it is going to be Raynor holding his opponent in place while he's able to knock out and get back with the, most of his army. Now, the on the right side, we do see the Archons and Charge Lots actually finally finding a base. That does knock Raynor back down to four bases temporarily. This is so funny. We're seeing 
the most Zergy play out of a Protoss exactly. player, and the most Protoss play out of a Zerg player we've seen in a very long time in this matchup. Absolutely, freaking Lule. I was thinking the exact same thing. We have we have alluded to it being a little bit. I, I mean, I have anyways. That this is almost like more like TVZ sometimes. The way that PVZ has now developed, it's back and forth. It's a couple of different engagements happening a lot of the time. Great, but never before have we think we've seen such Zergy play from the Protoss. The mass quantity of units. He's actually even moved away from Stalkers, which is still less expensive than Disruptors, Colossus, Stargates, <laughs> obviously. The unit and just count. basically. <laughs> into charge lots and probes and it's kind of working i mean it's worked better than the stalkers have in the last few minutes that's why i stopped building them he literally has zero things that shoot up besides three cannons <laughs> oh, uh it's getting so ineffective <laughs> yeah it is. <laughs> this is a situation where on a much wider more open map where the bases are a lot more far flung this could be very yeah. effective but on a map like inside and out where your fifth base is not that far from your main base on a relative scale. Maneuvering around is not that big of a deal. Now we're seeing Hero absolutely hard switching behind this. He is going for triple robo disruptor. But Raynor is at his front door now. He does yeah, not have any late. time to get into this. I think, like you say, it's too late. And we're already going to see quite a few probes going down on the transfer. The Archons pinned up against the wall. Raynor has traded so much better than his opponent, and it is looking like he is gonna close out this series behind it. What a wild, wild ride this was in game number three. <laughs> I think you're absolutely correct. If this was Cosmic Sapphire, I think that Hero has done maybe more damage or alternatively ju <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, just bought more time so that by the time Rainer goes, I'm done with this, this is getting stupid and runs across the map, he has, I don't know, six disruptors, apparently, because he's going triple robo. And even that might not still have been enough, right? They would have had to all get two shots off on the lurkers, so might not have been so perfect. Can disruptors save the day right here, right now? Uh, they would have to get perfect shots, and so far, Rainer is just simply avoiding them for the moment. It is kind of funny to also think that these five oracles flying around could theoretically kill, like, all the lurkers that are around everywhere. I guess not over here, actually, because Road for Hydra is also with them, but they could clean up the main, they could clean up the fourth base, but everything oh. is <laughs> under attack. Colossus waddles in and dies immediately, and I do think this is the current major problem, or perhaps an old problem. It's old math. Uh, that is lurkers, right? That's one of the reasons that we had the Stargates, I guess, be so effective, uh, or maybe be so desired <laughs> is that the lurker problem existed even before these recent patches can protoss defeat them with a ground army not so much certainly not with mass zealot it's <laughs> <laughs> that is that is not the answer i think charge a lot of mortal archon good positioning good flanks can absolutely deal with a lurker composition but when you've committed the to the amount that hero has it's just not going to work out rainer doing a great job by the way of drawing that army into uh hero's <laughs> own main base oh nice defensive disruptor shot right there and there is still a pretty big army going across the field uh but i mean this is a defensively set up rainer he's got vipers he waits oh for the God. shots oh to get God. fired oh Jeez Louise, that was all of the Disruptor shots. No way to take all of the Abducts, uh, take all the power away from the Disruptors with the Abducts, but can he actually break it fast enough is the question. We're getting into yeah. serious base race territory, and Hero just has to punch it, but he doesn't even see. Oh, he has Observer. So he does see all the Lurkers, maybe not over to the very right side. He's kind of breaking through to the Revelation added on. Hero cannot see the Lurkers over to the right side, so that is a problem. Disruptors continuing to get cancelled. Some of them finally getting those shots. Army supplies, though, still in favor of Raynor. The Disruptors are starting to crumble. Only three of them left over. All the Argons have been destroyed, and that is it's oh my gosh